Welcome to Mizzou K-12 Online. In this video, we're going to tour the Canvas interface and give you a brief overview of your course. If you need more in-depth training, Canvas offers its own set of student guides at this address. Before we dive into the course itself, let's quickly go over how to view your profile and change your profile picture in Canvas. To start, click on the Settings link in the upper right corner of Canvas, and then click on Edit Settings. Here you'll see any options you're allowed to change depending on your particular installation of Canvas. Next, let's go over how to add or change a profile picture. Keep in mind that profile pictures should be small and square to prevent distortion. You can see that we already have a profile picture added here, but we're going to change it to a slightly different version. There are two ways to do this. Under the Settings tab, click on the placeholder profile picture icon. Note that you can also change your picture on the Profile tab on the left. When you click on the picture icon, a dialog box will open. If you don't see this dialog box, your school does not allow you to change your profile picture. There are three ways to select a picture to use throughout Canvas. Either upload a picture from your computer, take a picture using your computer's camera, or import an existing Gravatar account if you have one. For this tutorial, we're going to upload a picture by clicking Choose a Picture. You can also drag a picture from your desktop and drop it in the uploader. Once you find the image you want to use, click the Open button and crop and drag the image until you're happy with the final result. Then click Save and your profile is ready to go. Now let's move on to viewing your Canvas course. The first thing you see once you log into Canvas and click on your course is the home page, with the title of the course running across the top. Depending on the course you're taking, you might see either tiles representing each lesson, a bulleted list of lessons or modules, or a sliding gallery with a separate image for each lesson. Clicking on the links, tiles, or sliding images allows you to go directly to specific modules. You can also click on the Getting Started link to go to the page where these tutorials are located. On the left side of the page, you'll notice links to some of the main sections of your course. We'll talk briefly about each of those in this video. So the first tab we're going to click on is the syllabus over on the left. The syllabus has a ton of information, so make sure you read through everything carefully. The first tab on the page is the overview. Here you'll find an official catalog description, and in some cases, a course introduction from the developer of the course. You might also see learning objectives or other course-relevant information in this section. Under the Materials tab, you can find out if there are any specific materials you'll need to complete the course, whether that's textbooks, registration codes, lab materials, or a calculator. The Technical tab informs you of any specific technical requirements for your course, which might include things like downloading MathPlayer for a math course. Then we have the Grades tab, which contains some detailed information on how the course will be graded. This is a really important tab because it provides you with the actual grading scale for your course, and it also gives you detailed information about exams and how to prepare for them. Definitely spend some time orienting yourself to the information provided here. The Credit tab gives you some details about the course developers and other basic acknowledgments about the media used in the course. And finally, the last tab is Accessibility, which lets you know that Mizzou K-12 Online will do everything it can to accommodate any disabilities you may have. If you do have a disability, contact us at this address. One other nice thing about the Syllabus page is the list of assignments at the bottom. If you click on any of the links, you can go directly to that assignment. So overall, the syllabus is a really great place to find general information about the course when you're getting started and also as you're working through the course. Now let's move on to the Modules page. The Modules page is where you'll go to access all of the content for your course. Your Getting Started materials, your lesson pages, your quizzes, your exams, and your assignments. It gives you an important overview of your course and helps you keep track of what you've viewed and what you haven't. If the module you want to view is not currently showing, click on the title and the module will open up. Within the open module, you can see the different sections of the lesson. 
The text below each section title will show you whether or not you viewed that section with a little green check mark next to it if you have. Within the module, you can also see whether you've submitted an assignment and how many points it's worth. Here, too, you can click on the links to view the assignments directly. If you've submitted a quiz, for example, you can click to see how you answered. If we look at Lesson 2, we can see that we have not viewed or completed all the sections of the module, and so they are labeled as In Progress, and Lesson 3 is locked. Also note that under Lesson 3, there is a prerequisite box at the bottom of the module saying that the previous lesson must be completed first. That means you can't jump around within the course and complete the lessons out of order. Okay, let's look at the Grades link on the left. Right away, we notice that there is a little blue circle next to the link. This indicates that you have one graded assignment to review. Clicking on the link takes you to the Grades page, where you can view your notification. Note that you can also access this page by clicking on the Grades link at the top of Canvas. This is where you'll go to view your scores and see how many points each assignment or exam is worth. Speech bubbles in the far right column indicate that there are attached comments. You can click on the bubbles to read them. You can also click on the links to go directly to the assignments or exams. You can review your completed work and leave comments in the right-hand column. If you want a printout of all your grades, click on the Print button at the top of the page. Now let's click on Discussions. Discussions is where you'll go to access the discussion forums for your course. The page is divided into three sections, pinned discussions, discussions, and closed for comments. Pinned discussions are important discussions that your instructor has pinned at the top of the page so that they are always highly visible. This might include a forum like Ask Your Instructor. Discussions are current discussions within the course, organized by recent activity, and the closed for comments section includes all those discussions that have been manually closed for comments because they are past the available date. You will only be able to read these forums. Clicking on any of the links under Pin Discussions or Discussions will take you to that forum, where you can hit Reply to add a new post. When you're finished, hit Post Reply. You will automatically be subscribed to that forum. Back on the main forums page, you'll see a green icon with a check mark next to the forum, indicating that you are subscribed and will be notified of any new posts. If for any reason you want to unsubscribe, you can do so by clicking the green icon, and if you change your mind, you can manually subscribe by clicking the icon again. The indicator boxes on the right show read and unread responses. The number in blue on the left indicates the number of unread replies, and the number in gray on the right indicates read replies. By default, as you read new discussion posts, the indicators will automatically update from unread to read. Below Discussions is the Conferences link. This is where you'll go to participate in chats through the conferencing system Big Blue Button. Chats are grouped into two sections, New Conferences and Concluded Conferences. When a new chat is available, you will see a blue Join button, indicating that the conference host has started the chat. You can click this button to join in. Once a chat has ended, it will appear in the Concluded Conferences section. If it is available for viewing, a gray View button will appear on the right when you click on the chat. Now let's take a look at Collaborations. The Collaborations page allows you to set up shared documents using either Etherpad or Google Docs. You can collaborate with individual students or groups on the same document in real time. Note that if you're using Google Docs, you'll need to create a Google account. If you don't already have one, and then authorize Canvas to access that account through your personal settings. Check with your instructor to see if you'll be using this feature in your course. Below Collaborations is the People link. There are two tabs on the People page, Everyone and Groups. Everyone shows all the users enrolled in the course, and Groups shows any special groups that may have been created for the purpose of collaborating on projects or studying. You may start your own groups, but keep in mind that any groups you create yourself can't be used for grading. Your instructor will need to build a group for you if you will be working in a group as part of an assignment. Finally, let's click on Helpful Resources. 
Helpful Resources contains quite a few tips for all Mizzou K-12 online courses. It's a good idea to look around this page and all of its tabs as you get started with your course. First off, you'll find study tips and an orientation quiz. You can also download a course planning sheet to get organized and help yourself prepare. There are tabs for different library resources, technical requirements, and proctored exams. The activity on the proctored exams page gives you some tips on how to take your exams. There are also tabs for Mizzou K-12 online policies and other helpful tutorials. One other thing you should be aware of is the Canvas menu across the top of the page. These links will take you to other courses you might be taking through Canvas, your assignments, your grades, the calendar, and student support. This last link is very important. If you need any help while taking your course, Mizzou K-12 online student support is available to answer your questions by email or phone. And last but not least, on the right side of the page, you will see a list of recent feedback. And above that, a link to view your course stream, which will show you your recent activity in the course once you begin participating. And that's how you navigate your Mizzou K-12 online course within Canvas. For more Canvas-specific tutorials, be sure to visit their student guides at this address.